this video tutorial, we will look at some of the ways in which system prognostic requirements have been defined within defense development projects, as well as their use as a baseline for prognostic definitions within a diagnostic analysis. Diagnostic engineering and the development of prognostic sensors are two activities that are typically pursued in parallel during the development of a complex system. The selection of the specific failures to be prognosed may be based on early diagnostic engineering efforts. And the final predictions of diagnostic performance will want to take into consideration the performance parameters that are determined during the prognostic sensor development. For the most part, however, these two activities are performed in parallel. Of course, diagnostic analysis is most profitable when performed early enough in the development process that the results can be used to influence part selection, system partitioning, sensor placement, and a variety of other design improvements that can enhance the diagnostic performance of the system. Now, it's often desirable for diagnostic engineers to perform a prognostics-informed diagnostic analysis of a system. That is, a predictive analysis of the system's expected behavior under diagnostics that takes into consideration the fact that the existence of prognostics will, for some elements of the design, result in corrective maintenance in advance of actual system failure. Now, prognostics inform predictions of a system's diagnostic performance by de-emphasizing those failures that will be largely handled using prognostics may result in more effective changes to the design, changes that can improve diagnostic performance by taking into account the entire PHM approach being implemented for that system. In order to do this, however, it is essential that prognostic capabilities be accounted for in the diagnostic analysis early enough that design influence is still feasible. Given the lengthy process that's typically required to develop and predict the performance of new prognostic sensors, it's important that analysts be able to introduce representations of expected prognostic performance within the models used to analyze the diagnostics. These prognostic definitions can initially assume that prognosis will reflect system prognostic requirements. These definitions can later be updated when actual prognostic sensor performance data becomes available. This is why, in Express, prognostic definitions are defined in terms primarily derived from system prognostic requirements. This allows engineers to reap the benefits of prognostics-informed analysis early and often, and yet still be able to provide later predictions of PHM performance based on information derived during the development of the prognostic sensors. Now, a review of system prognostic requirements reveals that nearly all requirements can be broken down into five basic parameters. The first is scope, the set of possible failures to which a given requirement applies. Common scopes include mission-critical failures, essential function failures, or failures that necessitate a system abort. The category is the set of prognoses to which a given requirement applies, such as embedded or sensor-based prognoses. Horizon is one of the most important parameters. This defines the time before failure that prognosis must occur. This can either be a fixed value, like 72 hours prior to failure, or a calculated value based on both the desired mission length and the corrective action time associated with each failure. The coverage is the percentage of failures in the specified scope that must be prognosed. This parameter can either be failure probability weighted, so that there's greater credit taken for failures that occur more frequently, or non-weighted so that all failures in the specified scope are counted equally. And finally, the accuracy is the desired confidence and correctness of the overall prognostic capability, typically defined as a percentage. In some requirement statements, accuracy is bundled together with coverage as a single percentage of failures prognosed parameter. We will now take a look at a few typical system prognostic requirements. In fact, these are requirements from actual projects. The numbers, however, have been changed in order to protect the proprietary nature of these projects. Okay, the first requirement reads, Prognostics shall predict at least 80% of the mission critical failures 96 hours in advance of occurrence with 90% probability. And if we break this down into its parameters, we can see that the scope is all mission critical failures, that the category is all prognoses, the horizon is 96 hours prior to failure, 
the coverage is 80% of the mission critical failures, and the accuracy is 90%. So it's a 90% chance that these prognoses will occur. After having identified the parameters within a system prognostics requirement, it's important that it be determined whether or not the prognostic coverage should be weighted towards more frequent failures. In other words, whether or not the failure rates of individual failure modes should be taken into account. Because this requirement reads like a performance requirement, one that specifies the expected performance of a fielded system, greater credit should be given to prognosed failures that occur more frequently than to those that occur relatively infrequently. Let's look at another sample system prognostics requirement. This one reads that prognostics shall accurately predict pending critical system failures that might occur in a 72-hour mission early enough to allow corrective action before the unit begins the mission. Prognostics will provide coverage for 65% of the system aborts, SA, and 50% of the essential function failures, EFFs, at a 90% accuracy rate. Now this is actually a double requirement where it has separate sets of parameters for two different scopes. The first scope, system aborts, differs from the second scope only in the percentage of the coverage that's required. All the other parameters are the same. The category in both cases is all prognoses. The horizon is 72 hours prior to failure plus the corrective action time it would take to repair the failure. And in both cases, the accuracy is 90%. Now for this example, it's not clear from the wording of the coverage whether or not the calculated coverage should be probability weighted or not. In cases like this, the interpretation of the requirement would have to be negotiated between the customer and the supplier. Here's a third sample requirement statement. It reads, prognostics shall predict 60% of impending critical faults or failures within no less than 36 hours before mission failure. Notice that in this requirement, coverage and accuracy have been combined into a single percentage. Now, this requirement doesn't specify whether 60% of the critical faults or failures must be prognosed with 100% accuracy, or whether 100% of them must be prognosed with 60% accuracy, or something in between. Moreover, the use of the word impending implies that this is a performance requirement, so predictions of prognostic performance should probably be weighted by failure probability, although, again, this interpretation must be agreed upon between the customer and the supplier. Now for a few brief words on how these system prognostic requirements relate to definitions and analyses within Express. As is explained in other videos in this series, the horizon and accuracy of each individual prognosis is represented in a prognostic definition, a variation of a test definition within Express. The category parameter is addressed by grouping prognostic definitions into test sets based on the prognostic category. Likewise, different scopes can be represented by creating subsets in Express to represent the sets of possible failures that apply to each scope. The fifth parameter, coverage, both the weighted and unweighted versions, is calculated by the Express software. Coverage calculation is described in detail in another video in this series, as well as in the series describing the Express Prognostic Effectiveness Report. This concludes this video introduction to system prognostic requirements and their use in Express.